Hey everybody, it's Jen LaForge. Welcome back to Joyful Living. Today's video, I'm not gonna lie, I feel a little bad about because I am sharing things that I no longer use when I travel. And some of the things I'm gonna share with you, I've used in the past and I've actually encouraged you to purchase. So first of all, blanket apology. But as times change, our travel habits change, you know, sometimes it's time to edit. And that's what I did the other day. And I'm gonna show you items that I just never, never, ever take with me anymore when I travel. And I'm really glad that you're here. First of all, if you are new to the channel, welcome. It is so great to see you. Here on this channel, I talk a lot about life encouragement, home organization, and a lot about travel and travel organization. And if you like this video, please don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more of my videos, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. It's totally free. And if you decide you don't like it, you can always change your mind later. I travel about once a month. In fact, I just added up and between now and the end of the summer, I have seven trips planned. So I am on the road a lot. Some of it's for work, some of it's for fun. But over my years of being a travel vlogger, of increasing every year how much travel I'm doing, except for that little break that we shall not talk about. Um, I have learned some things, some things that used to work for me that don't anymore. So I'm going to just jump right in. And this first thing that I'm going to start with is going to make a lot of you kind of mad because this is something that I have talked about in many, many videos and now literally never use. And that is a neck pillow. Now, if you are going on a really long overseas flight, this might still make sense for you. But honestly, I, I have found that even ones that I thought worked, if I'm really going to be honest, if I'm trying to get solid sleep, they just don't. And they take up so much space. I mean, look at this thing. Even the ones that, you know, are inflatable, those tend to spring leaks and then you're sitting there awkwardly trying to blow them up. And a lot of people will just like attach them to their bags or whatever, but I just find it's one more thing to be a germ catcher on my bag. They don't work for me. I always end up thinking they're going to work and then I try to sleep and I'm much more likely to like ball up a sweater that I've bought or something like that to like create a little pillow and I'm just no longer using a neck pillow. So yeah, don't use it. Don't use it. The next thing I'm going to share, some of you actually might be like, really, really shocked to hear, especially because of what I do for my job, but I no longer travel with a camera. Um, I, when I first started vlogging, this was my camera of choice. This is the Canon G7X. This is the original, not the two, which I do not recommend. It's still a great camera. There's nothing wrong with it. It's on this big old Joby tripod, which is still a great tripod. There's nothing wrong with it. But once I got my iPhone 13, I found that the quality I was getting from my iPhone 13 was not only every bit as good as what I was getting out of my Canon G7X, it was better. And the convenience of just having it right there on me at all times and not having to fuss with, you know, SD cards or, you know, battery chargers. I used to have to carry these guys with me. I also no longer carry like a separate microphone and a windscreen and all of that. I do all of it through my phone. And then if wind is an issue, I will just put in either my AirPods or my, my regular um, Apple headphones. And that is how I record my sound. Now, if you are someone who is like a really high cinematography level travel vlogger, that's obviously not going to work for you, but that's just not who I am. And I was finding that because of the added stress of all the extra equipment, I wasn't getting as many shots as I wanted to because it was just a lot of hassle factor involved and a lot, honestly, to carry around, a lot to pack in my bag and then a lot to carry around in my destination. And my phone, uh, if you've watched any of my travel vlogs over the last almost a year now, every single one of them has been filmed on my iPhone 13. So a lot of you have asked me about storage. Um, I actually, once I get back from a trip, I'm pretty good about editing everything off of my phone, but I also did purchase the phone with like the one terabyte of storage. So, so far it hasn't been a problem. I also have the upgraded iCloud. So I have put some money towards making sure that I never run out of space. And it's just so stinking convenient. And I also work as a YouTube consultant and people always ask me, what kind of uh, equipment should I buy? 
And I always say the same thing. The equipment you should buy is the equipment that you will actually use. So if it's more convenient for you to use your phone anymore, the quality can be so great. I just don't find all of this extra equipment something that is necessary for me. And I, I think the videos are just as good quality, if not better than they were when I was traveling with this big boy. All right, now this next item is something that I swore by for years and it's a great brand and they're great products, but I just don't use them anymore. And that is packing cubes. And this one kills me because I am still using packing cubes, but I'm no longer using this kind of packing cube. What I have found is that these no longer serve me when I'm packing carry-on only, which is almost all of what I do is packing carry-on. And the way that my away suitcase works, it this does not utilize the space as good as maybe if I had a checked bag, I would still probably use these if I was doing like a two week trip or checking a bag, but I cannot remember the last time I used these. Now, if you are looking for packing cubes, I can tell you categorically, Eagle Creek is a fantastic brand. These have held up great. They still look brand new, um, but I don't use these sizes anymore. I used to always pack this size, this size, this size. But what I do now is I use much um, smaller packing cubes that are shaped differently. And as far as I know, Eagle Creek may even have a line that is shaped like this, but they're actually designed to go in my away suitcase just perfectly. And what I do is there are two sides to my away suitcase. One side has like the, where the bars are for the rolling handle and the other side is flat on the bottom. So on the side where the bars are for the rolling handle, that is where I roll all of my clothes and I find I'm able to fit much more in there that way. And then on the other side, I use the packing cubes. I usually only take three of these, one for socks and underwear, one for swimwear, and one for pajamas and comfy clothes, things that aren't gonna wrinkle. I use three of these. They fit perfectly on that side of my luggage with plenty of room for other items. And then all of my clothes are rolled and go on the other side. I think this is one of those things that everyone has to really determine for themselves. And really depending on the kind of suitcase you have, Sometimes maybe these compression packing cubes will make more sense for you. But now that I have kind of landed on my travel bags of choice and I'm always using my away carry-on bag and I'm almost always using either the small everywhere bag or the backpack. And if you want to review on the newest version of the everywhere bag, I did one um, on that not that long ago and I'll put the link right here. Um, but yeah, it just, it, it just works for me and it, it took a lot of trial and error, but now I've got like my travel kit. I don't stress. I know exactly what bags I'm going to take. And I actually think I'm going to sell these because I never use them, love them. They've been so good to me over the years, but yeah, I never use them. So they are on my never use travel for 2022. Sorry. All right. This next thing, um, and this is going to be the one that I'm going to close out with because some of you are going to be like, how does she not do that anymore? I never anymore carry my own shampoo and conditioner, and I rarely carry my own body lotion. I have really worked on paring down my toiletries, and this is all to do with the fact that, again, I like to do carry on only. I know that a lot of you are like, I could never do carry on only. And it isn't like I'm doing it for any reason other than convenience. I just don't like having to mess with a checked bag. And some of you will tell me, well, I don't like to have a check or, you know, have to drag a bag with me through the airport. Well, if you're me and you use public transportation to get from your home to the airport, you still have to schlep that bag onto public transportation, sometimes up and down stairs, then to get into the Atlanta Hartsfield Jackson Airport, which is the airport where I go, which is a huge airport. So you have a lot of steps with your bags. And I was just chatting with Scott about that. My husband is an airline pilot and he said exactly the same thing. It really all comes down to ergonomically, what is gonna be comfortable on your body? What can you roll easily? How can you carry it in such a way that it doesn't hurt your back or make you really, really fatigued? So the more I travel, y'all, the more I am paring down, the fewer clothes I am taking, the fewer accessories I am taking, and the fewer toiletries I am taking. Now, unless you are literally camping, everywhere that I travel is gonna have shampoo and conditioner. 
Is it always the best? No. And in fact, I have, um, I order all of my hair care products from Briogeo and they always send little sample sizes. Honestly, at this point in my life, I only wash my hair maybe twice a week, usually only once a week. So I could absolutely go a whole week's vacation and maybe only use some dry shampoo or just get my hair wet. So I don't even really have to wash my hair. And if I really find I need to, most of the higher end hotels have nicer shampoo and nicer conditioner. Now, what I do always take with me is my Briogeo Curl Cream because I do find that that makes a big difference with my curly hair. But one wash and conditioner with a shampoo that's not my own is not gonna kill my hair. Maybe I'll even discover a new product that I like. And it's just one less thing to have to worry about and one less thing to have to pack. And that's really it. All the other things are safe. Um, the other things I've told you to buy over the years. It's just that paring down and having less stress of the schlepping around has made travel so much more enjoyable for me. I just like to feel like I know that everything that I'm taking has a very clear purpose, that it's all earning its keep, that it's all taking up its very precious real estate in my bag. And yeah, I'm really happy with how I'm sort of paring down that process down to what I absolutely need. And I'm finding it's giving me a vacation that is a lot more fun, uh, work trip that are a lot more fun and it just removes a lot of the stress. So is there anything that you used to take in your suitcase that you don't ever take anymore? Maybe technology that's changed or whatever. Put that down in the comments below. I always find it interesting to hear what things you guys have been able to pare down. I hope you have some really fun travels ahead of you and whatever you're doing, I hope you're finding joy. I'll see you next time. Bye!